It's, it's, it's very interesting because this uh, maritime dispute uh, goes on for decades. They couldn't just couldn't decide where is the line. Uh, for all sort of complex reason, how you de demarcate the uh, borders. However, it became more acute as Israel uh, explored energy, uh, gas fields there, and found the, uh, what's known now as the Karish gas field. And next to it is the Kano one. Now, as it happened, uh, natural resources don't recognize political borders. They don't really care about it. And then it became this di dispute is escalated who owns the, the, the natural resources under the sea. And when Israel moved the, one of the, the rich to the Karish uh, side, then the other side, of course, the case between Israel and Lebanon, and mainly it's not Lebanon itself, but the Hezbollah, that has a long-standing uh, conflict with, with, with Israel, starts threatening and sending drones, and in cases Israel starts to produce actually natural gas. So this makes the need for, for an agreement even more acute than it was before, because negotiation actually through medi American mediation is, is going for years. Mm. What do you think then focused the mind uh, to get the deal across the line? What was it that brought this to fruition? I think sometimes as it happens, it's the threat of conflict to what focuses on the mind. And the idea that you know, if you hear the language between the Hassan Nasrallah, the, the, the head of, uh, of the Hezbollah, and then in exchange Israel. And of course, when we talk the Hezbollah, we're always talking about Iran in the, in, in, in the background. Israel suffers from, from political instability for years now with election on average every 10, 11 months. So in this kind of volatile, fragile situation, threat can turn very quickly into unsavory deeds, and that was the fear when Hezbollah sends down, Israel reacts to that, and though both Israel and Hezbollah are not interested in a war, but we saw already in the past, they are not interested, but their rhetoric leads them to confront each other, and this was the, the biggest fear. Now, beyond this, is that uh, all of a sudden, if you ask two, three years ago, people said that the, the price is natural of, of gas, is not worth all the efforts and the money invested, especially when it's on deep in the sea. Nowadays, with the crisis in Ukraine and crisis in, 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 with gas supply coming from, from, from Russia, this changed also the economic calculus dramatically. Yeah. So let's split, look at what this deal is going to mean for both sides. Let's firstly look at it, Lebanon. Yeah. First of all, it's important to again, Lebanon, to, to look at it, because Lebanon is always in a state of, of political crisis. So, in principle, by the end of, of, of this month, the president should leave office and a new president should be to replace uh, him, Michel Aoun. But as Lebanon is in Lebanon, couldn't decide who is going to replace him, so we're not so sure. So it's part of his uh, legacy to have this agreement. And I think in the last year or two, I think also the, the, derives from, from the war in Syria, Hezbollah is not as the strong force in also the last elections that Hezbollah lost quite a few seats. Hezbollah is not the force that it, uh, that it, uh, that it used to be. So the, all of this enable Lebanon to reach an agreement. No, Lebanon is not only a political crisis, as a result of the political crisis, there is an ongoing economic crisis. And before COVID, we already saw uh, many young people in the streets overcoming confessional division between Christians and Shia and Sunni and Druze. Just say, we want to become a normal country, mm. not corrupt, that the economy is run efficiently, which is not the case. COVID, of course, intervened with, with all of this uh, for a long time. So the idea of having and, and exploring gas fields in the Mediterranean without the threat of war can really, can really be a game changer in Lebanon. And this is, was a great incentive for them to reach this agreement. Yeah, but one hopes that the corruption doesn't continue when it comes to the development of these really precious resources. No one can guarantee this. You see, Lebanon is a country in desperate needs for reforms, um, political reform to have a completely different system of electing its, its leader, the confessional system, 
that goes back decades and based on a census of the demography, Lebanese demography in the 1930s, so we are approaching a century of this, doesn't reflect the current condition there. So, but there are no forces that are ready actually to take this brave move forward. Maybe actually this agreement and the opportunity to change uh, Lebanese uh, economy will, f- will bring some forces within Lebanese politics to rethink whether what's happening right now uh, serves the, the, the interests of Lebanon. But you see, if you speak to Lebanese experts and, and ordinary people, they all say, you know, the situation is untenable, but this untenable since the mid-1970s. So if you wonder where a change is going to come from. Yeah. And, and from Israel's point of view, they won't develop the resources themselves, but they will receive revenues from it? From what? The Karish uh, gas field is on the Israeli side, and think now it's agreed that uh, there the revenues will go to Israel, we, uh, together with their business partner, international business partner. I think in the Kano one, yes, it will be produced actually by whoever Lebanon is going to sign an agreement with, but some of the revenues will go to Israel. Uh, to Israel. So in this sense, it will benefit from both more security, reducing the tensions with Lebanon, with the Hezbollah, and then by extension with Iran, but at the same time get some of the revenue. It's interesting that while, if you read both Lebanese newspaper and Israel newspaper, there's almost a consensus that you don't see that often, that this is a good deal, this is a good thing. With the exception also, a bit Hassan Nasrallah, he supports an agreement, but with some reservation, and the main opposition to this comes from Benjamin Netanyahu, who aspired to return to power, but he does it for him, the national interest of Israel is secondary for him winning election. So he said it, and this is kind of something that worth paying attention, where he said that Israel selling strategic assets to Lebanon, giving up, but more worryingly that he would actually abrogate this agreement, rescind this, if he comes back to power. So it means that there is another good reason not to vote for him. Yeah. Yeah, see, really interesting, as you say, the politics and the economics are always so intertwined. Good to talk, as always. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you very much for having me.